Item number, SCP-003. Object class, Euclid. Special containment procedures. SCP-003 is to be maintained at a constant temperature of no less than 35 degrees Celsius and ideally kept above 100 degrees Celsius. No living multicellular organisms of category 4 or higher complexity may be allowed to come into contact with SCP-003. In event of total power failure, if SCP-003-1 begins to increase its mass, assigned personnel must engage in skin contact with SCP-003-1. Ideally, personnel may use their body heat to return SCP-003-1 to above the critical temperature. However, skin contact must be maintained even in event of SCP-003 reaching activation temperature, lasting at minimum until SCP-003-1 advances fully to its second growth stage. Personnel who enter SCP-003's containment area must first be examined for body parasites of Category 4 or higher complexity and sterilized if such organisms are present. All personnel who have come in physical contact with SCP-003-1 are to immediately report for sterilization afterwards. SCP-003-1 must not be removed from SCP-003-2, except in case of emergency procedures detailed above. Any significant change in SCP-003-2's rune activity, including pattern, frequency, or color, should be reported within three hours of occurrence. Cessation of rune activity must be reported immediately. SCP-003-2 must be supplied with power via the source designated generator 003-9 at all times. Description: SCP-003 consists of two related components of separate origin, referred to as SCP-003-1 and SCP-003-2. SCP-003-1 appears to be composed of chitin hair, and nails of unknown biology, arranged in a configuration similar to that of a computer motherboard. Testing reveals SCP-003-1 to predate earliest known circuit boards by a factor of thousands of years. SCP-003-1 is considered sentient, but not actively dangerous except under certain conditions. SCP-003-1 was found on a stone tablet. SCP-003-2 on which it currently resides. The runes on SCP-003-2 are not part of any known language and emit pale, flickering light patterns. SCP-003-2 is controlled by a non-biological internal computer, the contents of which are mostly inaccessible without risk of damaging SCP-003-2. SCP-003-2 is capable of controlled emissions of radiation, including heat, light, and anomalous radiation types. SCP-003-2 contains an internal power source of an anomalous nature, which appears to have been losing power since several centuries before discovery. It is considered probable that SCP-003-2 was created for the purpose of containing SCP-003-1. Partially interpreted data recovered from SCP-003-2 may refer to a past and or potential future LK-class restructuring event caused by SCP-003-1. SCP-003 was located by remote viewing team SRV-04 Beta. It appears possible that SRV-04 Beta was deliberately contacted by SCP-003-2. Other organizations have also been alerted to SCP-003's existence, possibly by similar means. Despite this activity, SCP-003-2 does not appear to be sentient based on its lack of reaction to M-03 Gloria analysis and procedures. When SCP-003 drops below the temperature of 35 degrees Celsius, both components react. First, SCP-003-1 enters a growth state characterized by an exponential increase in mass. This growth state consists of two stages. In both stages, SCP-003-1 partially fuels its growth by converting matter around it, starting with any surrounding inorganic material, including atmospheric elements, then non-living organic material, including cells of dead skin, hair, chitin, enamel, keratin, and other biological materials. The first stage is always the same. 
SCP-003-1 will first increase its mass, then take a form similar in shape to an ophioroid, brittle star of 15 meters in diameter, including what appears to be a central processor of 3 meters in diameter. It will form sensory organs that appear to scan its surrounding environment, and will partially convert the area around it to an unidentified anomalous substance. SCP-003-2 seems immune from conversion. The second stage describes a growth alteration which occurs when SCP-003 comes into contact with living organic material. SCP-003 appears to template itself off of the organic material and will attempt communication with organisms that match its initial template or templates. In its second stage, SCP-003-1 may pause, slow, or change its growth then will also convert inorganic and non-living organic elements into functionally similar structures, while anomalously altering their physical makeup. While growth is consistent in the first stage, in the second stage SCP-003-1's growth rate is diminished by 20 to 90 percent, so long as SCP-003-1 remains in contact with living organic material. The percentage is determined by the complexity of the organisms in contact with SCP-003-1. SCP-003-1 appears to devote a large amount of processing power to analysis of living organic material. During each of SCP-003-1's growth stages, SCP-003-2 releases bursts of radiation that temporarily inhibit SCP-003-1's growth, or reverse this growth when the temperature of SCP-003-1 rises above 100 degrees Celsius. Similar radiation emissions have been replicated or recorded via other anomalous means. SCP-003-1's biology has been the subject of extensive study. Significant elements have been identified similar to SCP-1512 SCP and SCP-2756, the latter two of which have no further confirmed connection with SCP-003-1 and no known connection with each other, and none of which are fully understood. Technically, even less understood than SCP-003, thanks to the extensive cross-disciplinary research on the SCP-003 objects. To date, no convincing analysis has been put forward which satisfactorily explains SCP-003-1's connection to these SCP objects or others, nor its connection to modern technology beyond appearance and potential mimicry via unknown mechanism. Addendum 003-01 Acting on information gathered from linguistic analysis of SCP-003-2's runes and comparative data analysis, research team M03 Gloria has managed to establish a link between SCP-003 and data expunged for analysis of functions. SCP-003-1 must now be considered sentient and is to be kept a minimum of one kilometer from data expunged and the resulting byproduct at all times. Addendum 003-02 SCP-003-2's power loss has been exacerbated by the procedures performed by M03 Gloria. On orders of 0510, M03 Gloria will continue procedures. Addendum 003-03 During M03 Gloria procedures, SCP-003-1 doubled its mass and began rapid structural growth. Temperature was immediately returned to 100 degrees Celsius. Growth and mass increase of SCP-003-1 continued for 9 minutes and 6 seconds, at which time a sustained radiation spike was produced by SCP-003-2. In response, SCP-003-1 returned to its normal state in 3 minutes and 39 seconds. New growth dissolved into a dusty residue which was collected for analysis. Both SCP-003-1 and SCP-003-2 ceased all detectable activity. SCP-003-2 did not resume activity until connected to an external power source. SCP-003-2's runes glowed uniformly gray and did not resume normal activity for three hours. SCP-003-2 no longer appears to be able to maintain containment area at a temperature above 35 degrees Celsius without external power supplied by generator 003-3 through 9. Addendum 003-04 
The procedure detailed in Addendum 003-03 was repeated, and SCP-003-1 again entered a growth state. After 10 minutes and 13 seconds, SCP-003-2 once again produced a sustained radiation spike. SCP-003-1's growth stopped for 36 seconds, then resumed at its previous pace. On quadrupling its mass, SCP-003-1 formed a coherent outer shell and body. After appearing to scan its environment and partially converting its environment, SCP-003-1 then breached containment, entering the observation gallery where nine members of M-03 Gloria were present. On physical contact with team members, SCP-003-1 encompassed them in rapidly grown appendages and stopped growth for 15 minutes. SCP-003-1 then resumed growth and rearranged the component parts of the center of its form to the shape of a three-meter-tall female humanoid, with peripheral tentacles shifting to extrude primarily from SCP-003-1's newly formed hair and spine. SCP-003-1 then produced rudimentary vocalizations in an apparent initial attempt to communicate with researchers. Data expunged. An unknown individual approached the compromised containment area in company of a full squad of agents. The individual claimed to be acting on orders of 0510 and attempted communication with SCP-003-1. Data expunged. Following this incident, Agent Jackson of M-03 Gloria successfully restored power to SCP-003-2 and activated backup generators to return the temperature to 100 degrees Celsius. SCP-003-1 returned to its normal state in 21 minutes and 7 seconds, and was successfully recontained without incident. All nine members of M-03 Gloria affected by SCP-003-1 were afterwards found to be physically unharmed, with no residual effects besides psychological trauma. The converted materials of SCP-003's former containment area did not dissolve and are now under analysis. Addendum 003-05 In light of the previous incident, 0510 was removed from the 05 Council by joint decision of 05 05 and 05 M03 Gloria procedures have been indefinitely suspended. Special Access Program M03 Gloria required Transcript of Incident Report A21B Cycle 8 for dissemination to O5 command and staff. Interviewers. And present. O5-2, O5-5, O5-7, O5-10, and staff. Interviewed. Dr. Tilda David Moose, M03 Gloria Lead. Excerpt 35A. She tried to talk to us. We all heard her voice in our heads in a sort of half language we couldn't fully understand. Some of the others passed out immediately. I lasted a little longer, but it wasn't because of mental fortitude. It's just that she was trying to tell us different things. She showed Jones a replay of all the memories of everything Jones ever felt anything about, all over the course of a few minutes. She ripped three of the researchers apart and put them back together unharmed. She doesn't understand human emotion or pain or very much about how we experience the world. Yes, I would say the containment procedures are necessary. Listen, she wants to remake the world into a paradise. A paradise filtered through her own alien understanding of paradise, but still, a paradise designed for us, for humanity. She would be happy to make a paradise for any sufficiently complex organism she comes across first. Anything with a complex enough mind to accept her say, a dog, or a housefly. If she breaches again, we have to be there first. What would it be like? I don't know. She showed us images. Not quite images. I can see them in my head, but they're not pictures. The closest thing I can think of is what you see when you close your eyes suddenly and tightly, but brighter and more complex. The images had metallic sounds associated with them, and sensory details that we don't have the words or concepts to describe. The whole effect felt like words of some kind. I believe she wanted to see what we could understand, so she could understand us. She didn't have time to finish analyzing us. 
I don't know what would have happened if she had. Item number, SCP-009. Object class, Euclid. Special containment procedures. Object is to be contained within a sealed storage tank of heat-resistant alloy, with dimensions not less than 2 meters by 2 meters by 2 meters. Under no circumstances should SCP-009 be exposed to temperatures in excess of 0 degrees Celsius when not undergoing testing, and no water-based solutions shall be allowed within 30 meters of the object's containment area. Object's chamber is to be fitted with temperature sensors, which must be monitored at all times, and is to be kept refrigerated by no fewer than three redundant cooling units. Any malfunction of sensors or of coolant systems is to be reported and repaired immediately. If at any time the temperature in the containment area climbs above negative 5 degrees Celsius, the chamber is to be locked down and flooded with coolant until temperatures return to safe levels, negative 30 degrees Celsius to negative 25 degrees Celsius. Containment area is to be kept in total vacuum during testing, and personnel interacting with SCP-009 must wear full environmental protection gear. Following testing, all equipment, personnel, and other materials must undergo dehydration procedures and be quarantined for no less than 12 hours. Any moisture found displaying properties of SCP-009 is to be quarantined and added to the containment area as soon as possible. Living organisms found to be contaminated by SCP-009 are to be terminated by chemical desiccation and extracted molecules of SCP-009 added to containment. Description SCP-009 is approximately liters of a substance which superficially resembles distilled water, H2O, except with a distinct bright red hue. This red hue is discernible in all phases and serves as the most expedient method of identifying contaminated matter before its anomalous properties manifest. In contrast to mundane water, SCP-009 assumes a liquid phase at temperatures between negative 100 degrees Celsius and 0 degrees Celsius, and a solid state above those temperatures. At temperatures below negative 100 degrees Celsius, SCP-009 vaporizes into a gaseous phase similar to steam. Examinations of the atomic structure of SCP-009 have proved inconclusive. The substance appears to be identical to normal water molecules, with the exception of in contrast to standard laws of enthalpy. Dr. Site a resident expert on xenospatial physics, suggests that SCP-009 may originate in a universe with alternate physical laws. The most hazardous property of SCP-009, however, is its ability to contaminate normal H2O. When in contact with any aqueous solution, SCP-009 will, through unknown mechanisms, transfer its anomalous properties to other objects and creatures. Testing has shown it capable of assimilating ice, steam, tea, fruit juice, seawater, blood, and data expunged. The time it takes for this process to occur varies depending on temperature and the exact chemical composition of affected matter, and had been observed as taking between 3 minutes and hours. Experiments on D-Class personnel have illustrated the process of conversion by the substance, which has been found to follow a consistent pattern. 1. Initial Exposure Subject is exposed to SCP-009, and it begins assimilating any moisture present on the exposed surface. Creatures in this stage do not commonly notice any unusual symptoms except for a slight warming sensation. 2. Surface Conversion Frost begins to form on the exposed area as the heat produced by the subject and SCP-009 itself raises its temperature above 0 degrees Celsius. This stage can take anywhere from 1 minute to hours, during which time subjects begin to feel crystals from the epidermis. 3. Deep Tissue Conversion Exponential increase in temperature of SCP-009 causes runaway reaction throughout subject's body, resulting in Actual blood loss is minimal due to ice crystals allowing subjects to remain alive and conscious for up to hours. 4. Data Expunged Testing on D-Class personnel was discontinued as of 4-23-2000 Addendum Circumstances of Retrieval Subject was found in Alaska on November 5th, 19 
The Foundation became involved after reports were obtained from the native tribe, who came across the mangled bodies of a team of seal hunters, which had apparently been shipwrecked kilometers from the village. All victims were found encased in red ice. Cause of death recorded is internal bleeding, though closer examination found it is surmised that the low ambient temperatures in the area retarded the freezing process. This prolonged the time to total conversion by hours and allowed the victims to remain conscious until data expunged. Origin of SCP-009 is currently unknown. Investigation into similar events or materials in the area is ongoing. Evidence at the scene suggests possibly involving SCP- See Exploration Log A009-1 for details. Exploration Log November 5th, 19... Situation Report Mobile Task Force Beta-7, the Has Matters, was deployed to recovery site to catalog and safely retrieve samples of SCP-009 for transport to site... Agent... Bryce, MTFB-7, made a visual inspection of the area and noted three bodies, all male, between the ages of and 40 years. Dr. also on site, surmised from the relative position of subjects that Mr. age 32, hereafter referred to as Subject Zero, was the origin point of Subsequent subjects are presumed to have been exposed to SCP-009 while attempting to help Subject Zero back to the wreckage of the boat. During standard perimeter sweep, Agent Hughes located what appeared to be humanoid tracks leading northeast. After brief deliberation, a three-man team consisting of Agents Hughes, Whitmore, and Cassidy was dispatched to investigate potential security breach. Begin Log 642-43 EST Agent Hughes, we found something, Control. It's a cave. The tracks lead inside. Control. Copy, Hughes. What do you see? Hughes. Looks like a crack in the ice. It's maybe a meter tall. The opening's not very wide. Agent Whitmore. Captain, we got a body. Unidentified shuffling noises are heard. Control. We didn't copy, Hughes. Repeat. Hughes. There's a subject here, Control. Frozen in the skip. Male. About 15. Looks like he was trying to crawl away from something. There's a spear gun here. Also frozen. It's been fired. Control. Any signs of trauma? Agent Cassidy. Without touching him, I can't be sure. But it looks like he was stabbed by something. See how he's gripping his chest here? Right where this spike is growing out. He might have been attacked. Hughes. Did you hear her, Control? Control. Affirmative. Tag the coordinates for recovery and proceed into the cave. Whitmore. We using live fire, Captain? Hughes. There might be hostiles. So yes, but keep them in single shot mode. Don't want the guns getting too hot. Cassidy, good call. Don't want to end up like this guy. Whitmore, unintelligible. That's for sure. Agents ready their weapons and proceed. Approximately two minutes pass. Whitmore, unintelligible. Control, please repeat Hughes, we didn't copy. Hughes, it's... There's a chamber in here, Control. I'd say five or six meters in diameter. It's filled with red ice. In the middle, there's a pool. Looks about three meters wide. Depth unknown. Cassidy, the f cat. Screams are heard. Gunfire. Control. Hughes, come in. Are there hostiles? There is a brief pause. Hughes, f hell. Negative control, just Jesus, a f polar bear. It's dead. There's dozens of bodies here. Not human. I see a few seals, a snow fox, and a... What the hell? Whitmore, the f*** is that? Cassidy, no, 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 no. Oh, God. Control, Hughes, do you copy? Hughes, Cassidy found a... Um, a spider. A giant spider. There is a pause, during which shuffling and hard breathing are heard. Control. Is it alive? What do you mean by giant? Hughes. I mean f***ing huge control. At least a meter leg span. It's frozen. Wait, no. Sh I don't see anything inside. 
It almost looks like it's made of this stuff. Cassidy, unintelligible, not possible. We're nowhere close to Germany. Whitmore, what? What about Germany? Cassidy, Captain, I'm pretty sure that's 3023. Control, repeat, Captain. Hughes, Cassidy said the spider is SCP-3023, Control. There is a pause. Control, that's not possible, Hughes. Why would she think that? Cassidy, voice elevated. I'm sure, Control. I've worked with 3023. It's an instant made of skip nine. Whitmore, wait, what's 3023? Control, that is classified. Agent Cassidy, you are to speak no more of this. If the specimen is destroyed, there is no reason to worry about it. Please continue your search. Cassidy, mumbling. But how the f did it get here? Hughes, we copy control. Cassidy, sweep the perimeter. See if there's any side tunnels. Cassidy, but Hughes. That's an order. Cassidy, unintelligible. Hughes. Check these corpses. See if there's any humans. Whitmore, on it. Control. Agent Hughes, how deep is the pool you mentioned? Hughes, can't see the bottom. God, I'm having SCP-354 flashbacks. This is not cool. Control. Focus, Captain. Is there anything nearby you can use to measure the depth? Hughes pauses. Well, the spider has a spear sticking out of it. Control, can you safely retrieve it? Hughes, the suit should protect me, right? Control, all the same, try not to touch the affected material. Hughes, all right, I've got it. Should work. Looks to be about 1.5 meters long. Control, copy that, Hughes. Proceed with caution. There is a pause. Hughes, well, it's definitely more than a meter deep. I could go further, but I'd have to get my hand closer to that stuff. Suit or no suit, I'd prefer not to do that. Control. Affirmative, Captain. We'll dispatch some D-Class with gear to test that out. Continue your search. Hughes. Copy that. Well, I guess I'm... Cassidy. Voice distant. Captain. Hughes. Stand by, Control. What is it, Cassidy? Cassidy. Voice distant. I think you're going to want to see this, sir. I think I know where the spider came from. Hughes. Control, I'm going deeper in the cave. Control. Affirmative. Proceed. Approximately one minute of boots crunching on ice and packed snow. Hughes. Oh, that's not good. Control. What do you see, Captain? Hughes. Uh, an aperture. About a meter in diameter. It's covered in the stuff. Cassidy! Ten seconds of silence. Hughes. Report! Control. Do you have a visual of Agent Cassidy? Hughes. No. Sh she must have gone inside. Control. Please remain calm. Describe this aperture. Hughes. I, uh... It just looks like a tunnel, but there's no ice past the mouth. Red or otherwise. I can make out a dim light coming from somewhere inside. Might be Cassidy's torch. Control. Is there anything else unusual? Hughes. Cassidy! Cassidy! Control. Captain Hughes, please respond. Is there anything else unusual about the tunnel? Hughes. Yeah, it's... It's wet. The walls are. And the floor. There's a puddle about a meter down. Sh it's... The puddle is red. A few minutes of breathing and shuffling noises. Hughes. Control, did you get that? Control. Affirmative. Stand by. 30 seconds of breathing, followed by approaching footsteps. Whitmore. Yo, what's up? Where's Cassidy? Hughes. She went in there. Whitmore. Yo, Cassidy. Holla back, girl. 30 seconds of silence. Hughes. Unintelligible. Control, I'm going in there. Control. Negative, Hughes. We're rerouting a team of D-Class for recovery. Your orders are to withdraw the rest of your team and await further orders. Hughes. Whitmore. Whoa, hold up, take it easy. Control. You have your orders, Hughes. I don't think I need to remind you, data expunged. 45 seconds of silence. Hughes. Copy control. Let's go. End log. Addendum. November 9th, 19... 
After initial report and retrieval of specimens, it was confirmed that the arachnoid entity found by MTFB-7 was indeed a previously unknown instance of SCP-3023. Investigation has revealed the instance originated in as a result of data expunged. Addendum, December 6th, 19... After repeated inquiries, it should be noted that the portion of coastline upon which the initial victims were found was barren rock, approximately meters from the seashore, and was sufficiently dry and cold to prevent significant contamination of the surrounding area. Had the site been closer to the water, there is little doubt an extinction-level event would have ensued. Consideration of upgrading SCP-009 to Keter class under review. Addendum, December 16th, 2000. Supercooling of SCP-009 for the purposes of experimentation is disallowed until further notice. Personnel are advised that liquid nitrogen is only to be used on the subject in controlled amounts, and only until temperatures have reached acceptable levels. Related note. Possible application of SCP-009 in cold fusion research pending evaluation. Memo from O5 Command, January 9th, 2000. We've decided to keep this thing Euclid for now. We understand the concerns raised, but as long as you keep the power on and nobody goes near its containment area, there shouldn't be a problem. That's why we're keeping it in sight after all. As for the cold fusion research, we're putting a pin in that for now. Frankly, we don't have it in the budget for another snafu like Sight. The salvage team still hasn't found Dr. Cross-testing report 9507F23. The following experiment record was recovered via a chance occurrence of SCP-507 shifting into a universe in which the described test was carried out using SCP-107. The applicability of the reported findings to our own universe is pending review. Input, 10 milliliters of SCP-009. Result. Red snow fell in test area for 27 minutes with moderate intensity. Grass growing in test area began runaway reaction, which ended with entire area being frozen within minutes. Notably, anti-enthalpathic reaction of SCP-009 did not extend past the effective radius of SCP-107 for reasons still under investigation. Non-grass plants in area turned bright red in color, greatly expanded, and mutated to display cyan-colored tentacles similar to those of species Drosera capensis. Mucilage produced by these tentacles later found to be tiny beads of SCP-009. How the plant is able to survive with SCP-009 integrated into its cell structure is currently under investigation, with preliminary hypothesis being the plant is a reflection of flora from the substance's native universe. Item Number SCP-15 Object Class, Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-15 is impossible to move and is contained on site. A gap of at least 2 meters or 6 feet needs to be maintained around the entire structure containing SCP-15 at all times, and no structures of any kind are to make contact with SCP-15's current containment structure. Exploration is permissible but only in teams of three with full safety lines and GPS tracking. Any protrusions from SCP-15 must be capped and sealed immediately, with the new site recorded and logged. No aggressive action is to be made within SCP-15. No hand or power tools are allowed anywhere inside SCP-15. No repairs or maintenance are to be made anywhere on SCP-15. Description. SCP-15 is a mass of pipes, vents, boilers, and other various plumbing apparatus, completely filling a warehouse in The pipes appear to grow when not under observation, attempting to connect to nearby structures via sewer systems and underground plumbing. SCP-15 contains, at current estimate, over 190 kilometers, or 120 miles, of pipes, ranging in diameter from 2.5 centimeters to over 1 meter. Some pipes appear new, while others are rusted and leaking. Pipes have been reported as being made of bone, wood, steel, pressed ash, human flesh, glass, and granite. No pipes composed of lead, PVC plastic, copper, or any other traditional material for the production of pipes have been found. 
SCP-15 reacts to tools and aggression. Any personnel acting violently, carrying tools, or attempting to damage or repair SCP-15 in any way will trigger a reaction. Any pipes near the subject will burst, spraying on the subject for several seconds before the flow suddenly stops. Pipes have been reported containing oil, mercury, rats, a species of insect not yet identified, ground glass, seawater, entrails, and molten iron. Pipes will continue to burst around the subject until death or retreat. SCP-15 was cut back to its current structure after attaching to 11 other structures in the area. Currently, 11 personnel have been killed, and 20 more are still missing. Reports have been made of banging and screaming coming from within SCP-15. Item Number SCP-033 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-033 should be inscribed on any single sheet of irregularly shaped and handcrafted paper, papyrus, canvas, or vellum when not involved in active observation or study. The dimensions of the paper-like product should have no parallel borders, no right angles, and no side's length should be equal to any other 033 safe dimensions. When contained in this manner, the paper-like product should be secured in a locked, non-combination storage vault, at least 30 meters from any computing or recording device. Logs for checkout or check-in of SCP-033 should be filled out at the minimum safe distance of 30 meters to avoid possible contamination of the paper product or electronic device the log is kept in. When removed for study, SCP-033 can be copied to a white or chalkboard with 033 safe dimensions by Class D staff. Upon transfer to the white or chalkboard, the paper-like product that had contained SCP-033 should be incinerated. Observation and study should take place in a secured conference room at least 30 meters from any computing or recording device for the maximum 2,562nd viewing window. All observations or notes should be made on 033 safe materials. Under no circumstances should any notes regarding SCP-033 leave the storage facility or be input into a computing or recording device. At precisely 2,000 seconds of viewing, research must stop and SCP-033 should be transferred to a new 033 safe paper-like product and returned to storage by Class D staff. The white or chalkboard utilized in research must be incinerated as soon as possible after the transfer is complete, regardless of whether SCP-033 has faded naturally from its surface at 2,560 seconds. Whether 033 safe procedures halt or merely slow the deleterious effects of SCP-033 is unknown. It is theorized the irregular borders and handcrafting by mathematically unpredictable humans somehow disrupt the logic which allows SCP-033 to function. Description: SCP-033 appears as a field of complex mathematical symbols, ranging from simple layman identifiable representations to those only interpretable by highly trained mathematicians. The sum of the symbols is equal to a previously unknown integer, designated Theta Prime by Professor Hutchinson of intermediate value between and As all modern mathematical calculations are performed lacking the knowledge or use of SCP-033, its introduction into any system organized without it begins eroding the numerical and eventually structural integrity of said system. This effect extends to SCP-033's transfer to any paper-like, defined as paper, vellum, papyrus, canvas, surface, not possessing 033 safe dimensions or any computing or recording device it is input into. If inscribed on any other material, SCP-033 fades into unintelligibility in precisely 2,560 seconds. In addition, SCP-033 has shown an ability to leap from a 033 safe material to a manufactured or electronic material, which it can destabilize in at least one instance, requiring the institution of a 30 meter safe distance for electronic devices and paper-like products without 033 safe dimensions. There is currently no 033 safe specification for electronic storage. Of the operational research projects involving SCP-033 are dedicated to finding such a method for electronic storage. Operational research projects are dedicated to the application of SCP-033 as a neutralizing factor for potentially hostile, machine-logic-based SCP objects. 
Clarifying commentary from Professor Hutchinson follows for non-specialist staff in Document 033-A. Effects may be reviewed in Document 033-Q. Document 033-A. Debriefing of Professor Hutchinson after first observation. Professor Hutchinson. Every school child knows that 2 plus 2 is 4. The solid mathematical certainty of numerical order and value is the basis for all logic-based systems. We know that after 2 comes 3, and after 3 comes 4. What this formula proves is that we missed a number somewhere. Imagine, if all our technology was based on the belief that after 4 came 6, we simply didn't know or conceive of 5. That is, in essence, what this formula proves. We missed a number. Professor Hutchinson, I can't tell you why the handcrafted vellum works best. I can only surmise that it displaces mathematical predictability in two ways. 1. The irregularity of the crafting process due to human error serves to eliminate any traces of regularity that would be found in a machine-created product. 2. The irregular borders seem to confuse it somehow, as if it gets locked up looking for a pattern to identify and use as an escape hatch. I'll tell you this, though. I don't think it should be left on anything longer than a few days. It will find a pattern eventually. Professor Hutchinson, I don't think it destroys anything. I think it tries integrating itself into our system, and our system can't hold it. It's like trying to cram another book into a full bookshelf. If you get a hammer, you can get it in there, but the whole shelf bursts eventually. If it gets out into the internet, we will potentially experience a full IT infrastructure collapse within hours. Document 033-Q. Test Results. Trial 033-Delta-5. SCP-033 inscribed onto a single sheet of standard 8.5 by 11 inch manufactured white copy paper. Hereafter, X1. A second sheet of identical paper. Hereafter, X2. Placed 30 centimeters away. 80 seconds. Symbols consistent with the content of SCP-033 begin appearing on X2. X1 is unchanged. 160 seconds. Full content of SCP-033's formula appear on the surface of X2. X1 unchanged. 320 seconds. X1, X2 both appear wet, symbols still visible. 640 seconds. X1 is now roughly one part, apparently, water, and five parts pulp-like substance, still filling an 8.5 by 11 inch flat plane. Symbols become unintelligible. X2 still appears wet, symbols visible. 1,280 seconds. X1 no longer visible at all. Liquid part appears to have evaporated. Pulp-like substance apparently sublimated. X2 now roughly one part liquid and five parts pulp-like substance, still filling an 8.5 by 11 inch flat plane. Symbols unintelligible. 2,560 seconds. X2 no longer visible at all. Liquid part appears to have evaporated. Pulp-like substance, apparently sublimated. Item number, SCP-064. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. SCP-064 is to be kept in a suitably remote area for observation. Current goals are to generate a geometric model of the object's behavioral pattern and to observe any changes in this pattern due to location and soil composition. Certain sites in the Gobi Desert and Australian Outback, as well as a number of salt flats scattered around the globe, are under consideration for future testing. SCP-064's current location is classified to all personnel under security clearance level 3. Once growth has stopped, field teams are to document the structure's size, shape, and composition, and remove the object for transport to a new site. Description: SCP-064 is a light brown earthenware brick, composed primarily of silicon oxides and some organic matter. The object weighs 1.6 kilograms and measures some 10 centimeters by 6 centimeters by 20 centimeters. Its surface is smooth and flat, with some minor cosmetic chips. By and large, the object is visually similar to most solid bricks used in construction. When left lying on a flat expanse of soft earth, SCP-064 will begin to multiply through an unknown mechanism. Close observation reveals the appearance of an irregular lattice of silicone fibers in the shape of the original object, which then fills and solidifies with a soil-based mixture until it attains the proper mass. 
This process may be similar to mycelial propagation in fungi, with microscopic root structures mining minerals from soil in the immediate vicinity. Under optimal conditions, soil composition at roughly 90% silicon dioxide, it takes approximately 70 minutes for one complete brick to appear. Given a large expanse of earth to work with, SCP-064 produces a highly complex but theoretically stable freestanding brick structure, including floors and ceilings. Past observations indicate that the structure could attain the shape of a 12-pointed star, over 10 kilometers in diameter and of considerable height. However, this is speculative, as growth stops permanently once the structure contacts a significant obstacle, observed to include any solid object over 10 kilograms in mass. Structural integrity is very high, as bricks orient themselves to be as level as possible, and fit together almost perfectly. Interestingly, the structure's growth is tailored to a specific set of cardinal directions, with SCP-064 always being the northernmost brick on the lowest level. SCP-064 must be attached for growth to occur. Once SCP-064 is removed, the structure begins to decay, and all secondary bricks crumble to dust, at a rate roughly equal to their rate of appearance. Replacing the object within 20 minutes halts this decay, and allows growth to continue. Past this threshold, the process is irreversible. SCP-064 was found by chance, in April of 2000, during satellite observation of an elevated plateau in the Andes Mountains, a camera operator noted that one structure was apparently growing. Extrapolating the object's approximate location from the structure's apparent direction of growth, which stopped during recovery, field teams located the object by differences in color between SCP-064 and its secondary bricks, which were high in iron oxides from the local soil. A full excavation of the original site is underway in order to ascertain the object's cultural and technological origins. Item Number SCP-068 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-068 is to be kept away from any metals in an electrically resistant box, preferably made of polytetrafluoroethylene, or Teflon, and rubber. Said box is to be stored in Security Locker 26 at Site 11, Keys kept with Dr. Any requests for testing are to be redirected to him. Description SCP-068 is a wire stick figure, 9.8 centimeters tall, made of an unknown metal. The figure is composed of a single wire, looping back to the center. The wire itself appears to have been bent numerous times in multiple places. When an electric current is introduced to SCP-068, it becomes animate, moving about on its own. SCP-068's joints are where normal human beings would be. Once activated, SCP-068 begins to search for any metallic material. Once metal has been found, SCP-068 will begin to knead it and pull a thin strip of metal off. SCP-068 will then construct another figure similar to itself. The newly created figure will begin to knead the remaining metal alongside the original, creating new figures, which in turn, produce more replicas. SCP-068 will move on to its next stage after one of two requirements are met. The first is when there are no more metals in range with enough mass to produce another figure. The other is when an upper limit of 102 replicas are created. When either of these events occur, all figures will converge at one location and begin forming themselves into as big a figure as possible. With a maximum of 102 mini-figures, the resulting figure reaches 2 meters in height. SCP-068 situates itself in the intersection of the torso, arms, and head. Gamma, beta, and theta waves begin emanating from SCP-068 after this union. SCP-068 will then begin to search for metals again, attempting to create more figures, only scaled up to whatever size 068 is currently at. These replicas do not emanate brainwaves like 068 does. If 068 is not at the maximum size limit after this, it will continue to create and add more figures to itself until the limit is reached. Once it has reached the second stage and there are no metals available from which to construct figures, SCP-068 returns to its dormant state after 4 minutes and 32 seconds of activity. Material surrounding the original figure must be melted away in order to retrieve 068. SCP-068 is capable of kneading and manipulating any metal presented to it, 
regardless of properties. It also appears to be impervious to any attempts to damage or destroy it. Copies of SCP-068, however, have the same properties and vulnerabilities as whatever metal they were constructed from. SCP-068 can detect metals hidden from view through an as-of-yet unknown process. While 068 will not attempt to reach metals that are too difficult to get to, it will tear through anything that is soft enough for its limbs to penetrate. What it considers soft enough changes depending on what 068 is shaped from at the time. Addendum 068-A A proposal has been made to use SCP-068 to dispose of dangerous metal-based SCPs. Addendum 068-B The proposal to use 068 for disposal of dangerous metal-based SCPs has been denied, seeing as how many, if not all, of our dangerous metal-based SCPs are also invincible. The only thing we would have is a bunch of invulnerable wire figures running about. Honestly, who even thought this up? Dr. Item number SCP-072 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures All known instances of SCP-072 are to be contained in a 3.5 meter by 4 meter holding cell. Access is allowed only during authorized testing procedures without prior approval from senior researcher Grant. No materials created for the purpose of being slept on are to be introduced into a 15-meter vicinity of the holding cell. Description Instances of SCP-072 were first discovered in an apartment building in Michigan after two local media reports on SCP-072's effects caused a local panic, which drew the attention of Embedded Foundation agent SCP-072 is a shadowy and translucent projection which resembles a 0.9 meter long hand, the fingers of which taper to a sharp point. Detailed recording of SCP-072 is difficult, as it does not manifest at light levels above 5 lux. Instances of SCP-072 have only been observed to manifest when a human, hereafter referred to as the subject, enters REM sleep while located in a bed infected by SCP-072 and leaves a foot or feet exposed to open air. If these conditions are satisfied, SCP-072 will emerge from the foot of the bed and appear to use its pointer finger to tap on the subject's foot until they awaken. Subjects have reported that at this point they were unable to move, showing symptoms similar to sleep paralysis. This continues as long as SCP-072 is visible. SCP-072 will then use its pointed fingers to cut portions of flesh from the exposed parts of the subject's foot or feet. It will return to within the bed in between each removal, emerging without the collected material. This will continue until SCP-072 has taken all of the exposed foot or feet, stopping at the ankle. Though subjects exposed to SCP-072 report this process to be immensely painful, its paralytic effects render them unable to scream or call for help. It is unknown if manifestations of SCP-072 feed on the collected material or use them for some other purpose. As long as the wounds are properly treated, SCP-072's effects are not fatal, but have been observed to cause psychological damage relating to sleep in the future. There is also a secondary effect. Any bed with an approximately 10 meter vicinity of a bed which manifests the effects of SCP-072 will also host an instance of SCP-072. Destruction of a bed affected by SCP-072 reveals no anomalous materials and no trace of biological material removed from subjects. Addendum List of known SCP-072 objects SCP-072-1-2 and Dash 3, recovered from original apartment complex, three twin-sized beds, which were located within 10 meters of one another. SCP-072-4, a king-sized four-poster bed, contaminated during SCP-072's time in Site's temporary anomalous objects holding. SCP-072-5, a sleeping bag with bottom removed, introduced to SCP-072-1 for testing. When D-2191 entered REM sleep in object, data expunged, SCP-072-5 not recommended for testing in future. SCP-072-6 and-7, 
Beds introduced SCP-072-2 and later destroyed for examination. Remains of SCP-072-6 and 7 appear unaffected, but are to be contained until further studies may be completed. Item Number SCP-088 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-088 is to remain sealed in its airtight case at all times. The case is constructed of transparent acrylic plastic to resist the corrosive properties of SCP-088 secretions. In the event that SCP-088 should awaken from hibernation, any room that it is stored within should be constructed of durable plastics, rubber, or ceramics to hinder its ability to escape. Temperature of SCP-088's containment should not exceed 15 degrees Celsius, and any personnel entering containment must observe Level 4 hazardous material protocols and wear the appropriate protective gear at all times. Any personnel who do not observe proper containment protocols in presence of SCP-088, or who show signs of physical mutation, are to be demoted to D-Class and held for observation. Description: SCP-088 is a humanoid with reptilian features, which appear to have been mummified in a languid posture. However, SCP-088 is merely in a state of hibernation, from which it may recover if it is again exposed to a more hospitable environment than its current containment. Research has indicated that SCP-088 is approximately 6,000 years old, and is capable of secreting a variety of hazardous biological compounds from its mouth and hands. Some of these substances could be of great strategic value if replicated, but until a means to extract them without awakening SCP-088 is found, research into this area is on hold. SCP-088 was recovered with the mummified remains of 23 beings, sharing a similar morphology. However, none of these beings were alive, and examination suggests that they were originally human. Information obtained by Agents E-088-3 and E-088-7 and their subsequent mutation due to SCP-088 exposure corroborates this theory. Addendum SCP-088 was recovered in 1930 from a subterranean complex below Los Angeles, California. The site was originally discovered by GWS using a device he called a radio X-ray, which was little more than a mechanical dowsing rod. While S's methods were dubious, his discovery was not. After mapping a series of tunnels and gold deposits below the city, S declared that he had found the lost city of the Lizard People, as described in the legends of Arizona's Hopi tribe. S's claims went as far as to be featured on the front page of the Los Angeles Times on January 29, 1934, before the Foundation was able to verify his claims and silence Mr. S. The subterranean complex was not nearly as extensive as described in legend, and most of the artifacts recovered within were too corroded to provide significant information, save for a long message carved into the rock wall of an unfinished tunnel. Containment Breach Overview In more than 70 years of containment, SCP-088 has only roused from its state of hibernation twice, breaching containment with a caustic fluid that dissolves most minerals and metals. Each time, multiple personnel were exposed to a second compound, which SCP-088 uses to propagate itself. Affected personnel underwent a painful mutation, after which they shared the physical characteristics of SCP-088. Those few who received a large dosage of the compound, administered directly via mouth-to-mouth -mouth contact, were changed the fastest, and subsequently sacrificed themselves to protect SCP-088 from harm. SCP-088 has also demonstrated the ability to produce potent neurotoxins in liquid and gaseous form to combat containment personnel. Containment during the second breach was re-achieved by isolating SCP-088 and affected personnel in the facility and lowering the temperature. Affected personnel built a pedestal from discarded equipment, upon which SCP-088 took a recumbent position before slipping back into hibernation. The mutated personnel were neutralized at this point, and SCP-088 was returned to containment. The current strategy of lower temperature and non-metallic containment has been successful in keeping SCP-088 isolated. SCP-088 was reclassified to safe status on November 19- Lesson complete. 
To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.